what is, what's the basic idea? The basic idea is that we want to relate these various patterns of electric field uh, in space around a closed surface. We're just using a box here. Try to relate this to the amount of charge inside this closed surface. Okay, so somehow, the electric field pattern on a box, or just any closed surface, we'll see, somehow tells us something about the charge inside. Okay, if we get the field mostly pointing toward the outside, we know there's positive charge in that box. If we have the field mostly pointing toward the interior, we know there's negative charge pointing, uh, or negative charge inside that box. If we have kind of a mix of both, we have sort of equal amounts in some sense of field pointing in and field pointing out and, every, and somewhere else it's just kind of parallel to the surface, we had a charge of zero inside that box. So we can kind of see this qu uh, qualitatively. What we want to do now is make this quantitative. Okay? And there are some things that are going to matter here. First of all, if you have more charge inside, in fact, let's just look at a de another demo here. Here is a box, and we measure some electric field on the surface. And so again, what's inside here? Positive charge. If I have less positive charge, what's that going to mean for these electric field vectors? They're going to be smaller. Okay, I'm going to have a smaller amount of electric field. So there's going to be some proportionality to the size of the field and the amount of charge inside, which we sort of already knew. But we're also taking into account not just the magnitude of those electric field vectors. So we have the magnitude of the electric field that matters. But there's also a geometric issue here. There's the size or the area, the surface area of the box. So for example, Here's a box, and let's say I fix the amount of charge inside. There's a certain amount of charge inside this box, and it produces this pattern of electric field. What if I just use a bigger box to surround this charge? What's going to happen to the electric field measured on the surface of the bigger box? Why smaller? Because you're farther away. Okay, if you're farther away, you're going to have a smaller electric field. So somehow we have bigger area, smaller E, or magnitude of E, giving us the same amount of charge, or telling us that there's the same amount of charge inside. Okay? So I increase the area the electric field goes down. I decrease the area, the electric field goes up. So what kind of relationship is that going to be? Do we want something that looks like that to be proportional to charge? Is that going to give us the right kind of behavior? This says if I increase, do you get the same amount of charge? If I increase the electric field, I also have to do what? Proportional reasoning here, right? So let's say for the sake of argument that E over A is equal to some constant times Q, okay? Q is fixed, K is fixed. If E goes up, what has to happen to A? That has to go up. Is that what we see? No, E goes up and A goes down. A goes up and E goes down. So not E over A, but what do we want to see here? E times A would work, right? Something like the electric field multiplied by the area. If this goes up, this has got to go down to give us the same thing on the other side, right? If this goes down, this has got to go up, it's, and so forth, okay? So that's going to, it's going to be something like the electric field times the area that's going to be telling us something about the charge that is inside the box. But 
it's not just the magnitude, it's also the direction that matters. Because we saw, let's go back to this case. If I have a net charge inside of zero, and I have some field pointing in over here and some electric field pointing out over here, I want this all to add up to zero somehow, right? And so I'm going to need to worry also about the sign and whether I have electric field pointing in or electric field pointing out. And the way I can think about that is that I want a way to refer to the direction of the electric field with respect to the surface, okay? I want it essentially to give me a positive if it's pointing toward the outside of the box and a negative if it's pointing towards the inside to tell me something about the charge, right? So the field could vary in lots of different directions, right? So it could be pointing in, even in toward the interior of the box. So I'm going to define a vector on the surface that I'm going to call a, a unit vector, a unit normal vector. And I'm going to say that if the electric field has a component pointing in the direction of this unit normal vector, I want it to be positive. And I could vary the amount. If it's pointing like this, what do I want the value to be, what do you think? Zero, right? If it's pointing towards the interior, I want it to be negative. I want it to be negative. What's going to give me, how do I relate two vectors so that if I combine them in some way where they're in the same direction, they give me a positive. If they're perpendicular, they give me zero. If they're in the opposite direction, they give me negative. That's what? Cross product? What's the other one? Dot product. Dot product is the one we want. Dot product is the one we want. Okay. Cross product is going to give us a vector. So we don't want a vector here because we want to, we want to find a scalar quantity, namely charge. So we're going to be looking at a dot product. Dot product of what? Well, a dot product of something we're, something we're going to call n hat. Again, n hat is defined to be a unit normal vector. We all know what a unit vector is, right? Unit vector has a magnitude of 1. What's normal mean? Perpendicular to the perpendicular what? Oh, whatever it's referring to. In this case, it's referring to the, the surface of the box, okay? Perpendicular to the surface, okay? So it's perpendicular to the surface. It's got a magnitude of 1. And by definition, this n hat vector points towards the outside of the box. Okay? This particular surface could have two vectors that are perpendicular to it, one pointing toward the outside, one pointing toward the inside. We're always talking about n hat pointing toward the outside. Okay? Whatever surface we happen to be on, if we were on the top surface, n hat would be pointing up. If we were on this uh, uh, left side, n hat would be pointing towards the left. Okay, so it depends on the surface and depends on pointing toward the outside. That's just the definition, just how the convention we use. And then we can say E dot N hat okay, is the component of the electric field that is along the direction of N hat. Right? This is the magnitude of E times the magnitude of N hat times the cosine of the angle. And so we're going to use this and this idea of the area coming into play as well to define another quantity, which we're going to call electric flux. Electric flux is a scalar quantity because it's based on a dot product. It's E vector dot n hat vector times delta A. Okay, so what we're typically doing, I'm, I'm saying delta A because what we typically do is we break up 
a surface, a closed surface, into small increments. And each increment of area, I'm just, just going to call delta A. Okay? So this is the electric flux on a surface okay, of area delta A. It's a scalar. And it could be positive or negative, okay, depending on the relative directions of the electric field and n hat. 